Melissa Kerner from FriendYourBody.com, the place to take charge of your health and transform your life. And today I'm going to show you how to make homemade angel food cake. Now, July 4th is right around the corner, and I thought, what better way to celebrate than by making some homemade strawberry and blueberry shortcake? But you got to be careful. Even though it's a seemingly healthy dessert, and it's really easy to make, the angel food that you buy at most stores is loaded with harmful ingredients. All you have to do is look at the package and look at the list of ingredients. You know, we're talking about things like bleached flour, salt, sugar, soy is often used, high fructose corn syrup or corn sugar. You'll also find artificial flavors or natural flavors. And you have to be really careful when you see those umbrella terms, you know, natural flavors or artificial flavors. Because what that means is that the food company is using a label that can represent a list of ingredients that don't have to be listed individually. So you could be eating things that you're not agreeable with or things that aren't good for you and you don't know it because it doesn't have to be listed. So how do we avoid these ingredients? Quite simply is just to make your own from scratch and it's really, really simple. So I'm going to share with you one of my personal favorite recipes and here's all you're going to need. Uh, one cup of almond flour, You'll need uh, half a teaspoon of sea salt, um, and then you'll need two heaping tablespoons of coconut oil that's previously chilled. You could also use ghee, but I prefer coconut oil. Um, you're going to need two tablespoons of honey, um, and then you're going to need four egg whites. That's it. So here's what you're going to do. Take one cup of almond flour, put it in a large bowl. Then you're going to put your half a teaspoon of sea salt. And then you're going to put your coconut oil in. Again, it should be chilled. Not really, really hard, but chilled. And then I'm only going to use one teaspoon, I'm sorry, tablespoon of the honey now. And then I'll use the other teaspoon, tablespoon, <laughs> keep mixing those up, in a minute. So what I'm going to do is put these in a bowl. And then I'm going to use my hands to mash it up. So you want to make sure that you break up the coconut oil and the honey in the flour so that it's nice and blended. Otherwise it won't come out well. And this is fun if you have kids to do this with because they get to get their hands dirty. So this is essentially what it'll look like. You know, it's all nice and broken up, nice and powdery. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mixture and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator while I'm making the egg whites. Okay, now it's time to do the egg whites. So I've got my four egg whites um, pre-portioned in, in the bowl. I already took the white, uh, the yolks out, cast aside the shells. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this until it starts to get a little frothy and you want to blend it um, on medium. And then as it starts to get a little frothy, I'm going to stop, put my sweetener in, and then I'm going to continue to mix it until it starts to form peaks. Okay, so as you can see, it's not completely mixed well yet. It's not making the peaks, but it's starting to get frothy. So now what I'm going to do is stop and add my sweetener. And again, you want to add about a tablespoon. I said a teaspoon before, but um, preferably a tablespoon to make it sweet. It won't make it too sweet. Of course, you could always add more if you want things a little sweeter. All right, now I'm going to go back to mixing on medium-high until the um, egg whites start to form peaks when I pull the mixer out. Okay, so now I know that it's ready because when I take the mixer out, see how it starts to form peaks in the egg whites. So now we, we know we're ready to uh, keep moving. So now I'm going to take my flour mixture out of the refrigerator and I'm going to very gently fold in half of the egg white mixture and then I'll fold in the other half once I sort of mix the initial batch pretty well. So I'm just going to take half, about half, and just very gently mix it in. You've got to be really careful 
that you don't mix it hard because you'll flatten it and um, your angel food cake won't come out very fluffy. So just very gently mixing it, coating it, trying to get the egg whites to mix as evenly with the flour as I can. All right, and now I'm going to put the rest in there. And same thing, just very gently fold it in. Otherwise, you will have a very flat angel food cake. And then what you're going to do is just pour your mixture into um, an evenly greased loaf pan. So I've got a cast iron loaf pan here, and I just greased it with coconut oil so it won't stick. So once I pour it in there, I'm going to bake it at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. You just want to make sure when you stick a fork or a toothpick in there that it comes out clean. So I'm going to put this aside for a second because I, now I want to assemble a pre-made um, batch that I have here. All right. So what I've done is I've cut up some of my um, pre-made angel food cake. And what I like to do is I like to stack it. So I cut three pieces. I'm going to put one piece on the bottom and then I have some pre-cut strawberries, some blueberries, and I made some homemade whipped cream. And all I do is I, I buy raw whipping cream and I usually buy about two cups. That's typically how it comes. And I just, I blend the whole batch and I'll put just a little bit of sweetener in there. I usually put a little bit of stevia, um, but you can use maple syrup. You can use honey. Um, this is another area I highly recommend, um, you know, making yourself. You don't want to buy the store-bought Cool Whips or whipped creams because they too have the hydrogenated oils and the sugars and all kinds of funky ingredients and preservatives that you can't pronounce. It's really easy to make. So I'm going to put my first layer down. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, whipped cream on top. And then I made my own strawberry sauce just by chopping up some strawberries and putting a little bit of stevia, but again, you can use honey or maple syrup. So I'll put my next layer, a little bit of strawberries, and I'll put some blueberries. How patriotic is this? Red, white, and blue. Love it. Okay, and then I'm going to put my next layer on top of that. A little bit of whipped cream. This is a massive dessert quite yummy. Um, my strawberry sauce. It's okay. It's a little messy. It's meant to be. Some strawberries again. I mean, I'm going to go for a triple decker. Some cream again on top. strawberry sauce and then some blueberries oh yeah this is really enough for two people this would be a great dessert to split of course you could just do one layer if you want to keep it really simple but I just think it looks so pretty and that's that so um, that's it Nice and tasty, healthy, simple to make. So now I want to hear from you. Uh, tell me about some of the healthy sweet treats that you like to make to celebrate the 4th of July. And if you like this recipe and you found it helpful, uh, please share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're looking for more resources to help you take charge your health and transform your life, and get some personal insights from me that I only share through email, make sure that you head over to friendyourbody.com and sign up for our free weekly healthy fitness and nutrition tips. And of course, we also offer some recipes for you there. And as always, I encourage you to stay focused on your health and continue to move forward by making small and simple healthy lifestyle changes so that you can look and feel your absolute best. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Have a great day.